So I have recently changed to a different window manager. Now for the last year or so, Qtile has been my home. And I still think that Qtile, out of all the window managers that I've tried, has been my favorite. Now that is saying something considering that I was a huge i3 fan for a couple years at least. And I still think i3 is really good, but Qtile, once you get used to the workflow of Qtile and you learn some Python and you're able to configure it really well, Qtile is just one of those window managers that just kind of you stick to for quite a while as long as it works. Now, that while it works thing is an important little proviso because it does update, or at least the dependencies of Qtile update quite often. Qtile itself doesn't update quite as often. So if you're on a rolling release, sometimes things tend to break. And that happened for me. Now, some of that was because of version conflicts and stuff like that. It ended up getting fixed and it is fixed in fact on OpenSUSE right now, but it took a while. So while it was not working for me because of those version conflicts, I decided I was going to hunt for a different window manager. Now I have tried, I'm pretty sure all the major window managers at this point, BSPWM, i3, Herpsluff, WM, Hyperland, Sway, you name it, I've tried it. And some of those I like, some of them I don't like. I'm obviously not a big Wayland fan, so the Wayland compositors were kind of out for me, but every Xorg window manager has its pros and cons and I've liked and disliked some of those things uh, you know over the course of the last few years I've tried them all and been variously happy or unhappy in those window managers but I was trying to find something that would either tide me over until Qtile was absolutely fixed or that I could actually make my new window manager and kind of make it my new home something that I you know was stable it used Xorg because again not a Wayland fan and was something that I could configure and learn on my own or at least with some help and you know understand what was going on now all of that goes to say is that one of the window managers that i've tried repeatedly like over and over and over and over again is xmonad now i i'm kind of like a very stubborn person you know i don't know if you guys know this about me but i don't like being a failure when it comes to technology now i don't consider myself a tech wizard at all. In fact, I would say that in many cases, I'm the eternal noob that I claim to be. I'm a noob and I'm, I am probably will always be a noob. But when I find something that I want to try and the other people like, I want to at least understand why they like it. And usually that means using the thing that those other people like, because obviously, you know, they found something, you know, positive about it. I would like to at least understand their position when it comes to that thing. Xmonad is one example of this. NixOS is obviously another one of those things. A lot of people are very pro on NixOS, and I'm trying, you know, in my long term review, I'm trying to understand why people are so positive about it. So, Xmonad, just to get away from the NixOS stuff, is one of those things that I've tried it over and over again, and just haven't been able to find the thing that makes it, you know, so popular amongst some certain segments of the window manager population. So I decided this time I was going to try again, uh, just because again, I'm very stubborn. And when I fail at something, I want to try again. So here I am in Xmonad right now. And if you watched my stream on Wednesday, you'll know that I'm actually doing fairly good. And I've, you know, I've done some theming here. I've, you know, I have some different themes to switch between, although I haven't really. I'm basically on the last one that I created, and that's because I'm still learning how to get the key bindings to do from one to the other, but that's beside the point. But the here is is that I'm on Xmonad. I'm using, I've been using it full time for over a week. And what I thought I'd do today is talk about some of my thoughts on Xmonad because they have transformed since the last time I tried this because my last video on xmonad was basically saying xmonad sucks haskell's the effing devil and you should definitely never use xmonad i think those were the i'm pretty sure those were the only 10 words that i said in the entire video uh that xmonad and haskell were literally the worst things ever and i never wanted to see them ever again i think that's probably what i was talking about but since that time and since i've been using xmonad for a little while i have some thoughts that have evolved over the course of that time. So before we jump in, leave a thumbs up on this video. I know we're well into this now, but if you would leave a thumbs up on the video, I'd really appreciate it. It really does help the channel. So Xmonad is first off a really good window manager. 
okay? It really is a really good window manager. It is also simultaneously the hardest window manager I've ever tried in my life. Now, I have tried Rat Poison, which is supposedly way harder. I didn't think it was harder, to be honest with you. I thought Rat Poison was actually a little bit easier than X-Monad. And that's just my opinion, obviously. A lot of people consider it the other way around. But for me personally, X-Monad is the hardest window manager I've ever tried. And it all comes down to how it's configured. So this right here, my friends, is my xmonad config now in traditional matte fashion i have taken someone else's configuration file and made it my own now in different news i did not take district tubes configuration file because his is gigantic and I, he does that for a reason there's nothing wrong with it he does it because he's trying to teach people haskell and xmonad and stuff like that that's just the way he does it and that's perfectly fine he even says on his uh, dot files do not use this Unless you know going in that it literally has every feature conceivably there and it's all commented very nicely. You know, he does a good job, right? I wanted something a little bit more minimal than that. Mostly because it was, was going to allow me to use it and understand it a little bit better. So like, let's just take this section here. I understand this section here. These are variables being defined here at the top. These define the colors. I understand that, right? Same thing with this. You know, this this defines the terminal. All this stuff is a very similar syntax to what you'd find in C and in Python. It's honestly exactly the same in some cases. So I understand all of that very well, and it was easy to get around. I can understand the import you know, section, obviously. The, the next section here deals with the workspaces, then, and then it comes with the, the rules. And then I put in the startup hook, because this particular configuration file didn't have the startup hook at the, at the beginning. They obviously used you know, X and RC, so I had to put this in. I was able to do that. Uh, then I put the scratch pad pads in. It didn't have scratch pads, so I was able to put that in. So I, I wanted to go more minimal because I was, you know, wanted to be able to do some of these things myself. Now, obviously, I've had help. So Darth Vader specifically, thank you so very much for your 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 help on actually getting this thing up and running. Every time I've come up with an error that I couldn't figure out on my own, I was off messaging Darth and he, he helped me out quite a bit. So I wasn't completely on my own, but I've been actually very proud of myself when it comes to being able to do this in this particular configuration file, adding the different features, you know, and things just, you know, are working a lot better than before. So the reason why in previous attempts that my happiness with Xmonad was non-existent is because of Haskell. The Haskell syntax is not something that I particularly understand all that well. Now, even a week later, there are still parts of this that don't make any sense to me whatsoever. So specifically, this end part right here never makes any sense to me whatsoever. Some of them are just whatever, but then you have like, there's a dollar sign here and there's these arrows, not exactly sure what those do. And then there's the the plus mark in brackets and you know whatever and they all mean different things and sometimes there's a period in between there so if you look down here there's actually a, a period here for some reason like i only vaguely now know why those things are there and i'm sure the people who are, are haskell pros could be in the comment section below though this would this is what this means this would i understand all that stuff right some of these are replacements for parentheses some of them have you know tie things together in certain ways i understand the very vague general reasons why but that syntax has always been a pain in my ass and mostly because the documentation is one way of doing things and then you look at other people's configuration files and they've done things in a different way so my biggest problem with xmonad is the way that it's configured and it's not that you can't do things in xmonad it's that everyone does things in a different way so my primary way and since time immemorial, well, actually since 2017, <laughs> but since 2017, my way of learning things when it comes to window managers is to steal someone else's configuration file and make it my own, okay? It's how I learned i3. It's how I learned BSPWM. It's how I learned DWM. It's how I learned Qtile. You name it, that's how I learned it. I went and found someone who know, knew what they were doing and had a good documentation or comment, a good commented configuration file i stole it from them got it up and running and then made my changes over the course of using that window manager and configuring it to my liking i would therefore be able to learn by emulation how to configure the window manager it worked really really well for a long time because for the most part 
when you're doing something and win a manager, there's usually just one way of doing it, or it's there's a best practice way of doing it, right? Most people do rules, for example, in BSPWM the exact same way. So if you want to set a rule in BSPWM, there's a set way of doing that. Same thing with you know Qtile and the same thing with i3. If you want to set a rule, there's a way to do that. There's not 12 different ways of doing it. Uh, even in DWM, which is like Qtile and like Xmonad, configured in a programming language, in, in this case C, there's one way of doing a rule, okay? Now I'm sure that there are some more prolific C programmers out there who could say that there's different ways of doing a rule, but when it comes to doing a rule in the DWM configuration file, usually there's one way of doing it. So that's just that. But in Xmonad, when it uses Haskell, there's different ways of doing it. So my way of pulling someone else's configuration file didn't really work. So if I actually go to a different workspace here, and right now I'm actually in desperate need of more workspaces. <laughs> yeah, Because right now I have a window on every single workspace, and man, do I need some more. I, that's that's my next thing to figure out is how to add a couple more more workspaces. But if I go to distrotubes.files, which I have downloaded, so if I go into cd.files, dt.files, uh, .config, xmonad, xmonad.hs. So this is distrotubes.files for xmonad. And while some of it is very similar to what I've done, there are differences. So you can see, like, we just looked at my configuration file, and these are where I defined the variables, right? This is just me emulating what was already here, and I've added a few of my own. If we go to DTs, they're done in a little bit different way, right? Because they're called in a different way. And that's just one way of doing it. My way is another way of doing it. There's a third way of doing it. So when I want to learn something from someone else's configuration file, it's going to depend on whether or not they did things the same way that I did them previously or the person who used my configuration or created my configuration did them. So learning from other people's configuration files is almost, and I would say this, damn near impossible because they all are different. And the thing about Haskell is, is that this stuff is not interchangeable. So I can't go and say, let's just say I wanted for whatever reason to steal all of DT's variables here. I can't just go here and, you know, scroll up here to the top and get into visual mode and just yank those things, paste them into mine and say, Randy Dandy, I'm, go <laughs> I'm going to actually use all of those in mine and have it compile. It would not work, okay? If I wanted to take some of those things, I'd have to either change the way that I did it or figure out how these particular variables are called later on in the configuration file and change that or add those to the do or the, the loop at the end of xmonad you'd have to change that i don't know if that's a loop or not i, I think it's a loop but whatever you know you'd, you'd have to put these things in in a certain order and if you don't put them in a certain order you can't mix and match the orders so you do things in one way and you have to continue to do things in that way for the entire configuration file you can't mix and match so all that comes down to the fact that the way that I have traditionally learned how to do window management and window managers, how to configure window managers, has been to learn from other people doing the configuration file. In this case, I haven't been able to really do that. And that has been why I have almost repeatedly failed at Xmonad over and over again because that's how I've attempted to try to do this. Now, here's the rub. When it comes to the Xmonad documentation, which is actually the Haskell documentation, they seem to be one and the same. They're not even consistent within the documentation over how to do things. So there are two different tutorials from the Xmonad developers or from the main Xmonad com community on how to get started with Xmonad. One does thing one way, one does things the other another way. And they're, they're like I said, they're not interchangeable. They don't both explain everything that you need to know to configure. So like one of them doesn't tell you how to add scratch pads. One of them does. So if I wanted to, if I started following one way that didn't have everything I needed in it, and I went and found the other one that did have, but I couldn't combine them at the end, you know, so even the documentation on their GitHub page and on their Haskell documentation isn't always consistent on how you can do things. And like I said, you can't mix and match this stuff because it's not, in, it's not compatible. You have to import all of the right Xmonad libraries or modules or whatever. You have to put all of them in the proper places here at the bottom. So if, if you, you're calling things here, you know, in, in the, in the main, you have to put them all, you know, in the same syntax you defined them in earlier in the configuration file. If you don't do that, it's not going to compile and it's not going to run. 
So you can't mix and match, like I said. And it just makes it inherently hard to learn if you learn the way that I have over the course of the last three years in that you use other people's configuration files to do the learning. So this particular time is different a little bit, mainly because while I, yes, I did use someone else's configuration file to jumpstart my, both my XMO bar and my XMO net, I have stopped there and moved to just using the documentation and recognizing how my particular config file does things. So I will know when I'm searching for a problem. So like later on, for example, I'm going to learn how to add more workspaces to Xmonad. I'm going to learn how to do that. And I'm going to know as I search for that problem or the solution to that problem, I'm going to be able to figure out if the solution that I find is going to be compatible with my particular configuration file. I've learned to kind of suss out how those differences, you know, work and how incompatible one way of doing something is compared to the other. So I'm, I'll be able to find a way to do it that will work with my configuration file. That's the difference this time is that I'm actually putting time and effort into learning a little bit more of Haskell, but also I'm learning to recognize when something will work, when something won't work. And that has been all of the difference. So I can tell when I go find a solution to something, if that particular, you know, copy pasta is, is going to mess up my configuration file. And I've been able to avoid the pitfalls that I had in the past. Also, I've been more successful at doing things on my own. Well, like I said, I have had help. The like the scratch pads I did all on my own. The startup hook I did all on my own. And and you can tell I'm very very proud of that because in previous times, whenever I got to one of those roadblocks where I'd have to do it on my own, I would inevitably fail because it was just too confusing. And you know, obviously finding you know I couldn't go to someone else's configuration file and say, hey, that's how they did the startup hook because taking their version of the startup hook and putting it in mine doesn't necessarily mean it's going to work because they could have done a syntax in a slightly different way that isn't compatible with the syntax that I used, right? So this time has been much more successful. So my overall thoughts on Xmonad is that it is very, very good. It has all the features that I want. It, the workspaces work the way that I want. So it has a shared amount of workspaces on both monitors that can move move around dynamically. It's very, very good. It has scratch pads. It has all the stuff that I want. So it's a very good window manager. It is also really, really hard. Now I know the Haskell and Xmonad veterans out there will say, well, it's not that hard. It's not hard for you because you understand going in or you understand now after you've put the work and effort in to learn and it's easy for you because of that case, right? You are now a well-learned Haskell person. Uh, for the rest of us noobs going into Xmonad, it's difficult. It, like I said, it's the most difficult window manager I've ever tried. And like I said, I've tried, I've tried them all. So if someone once asked me, or I get actually asked this question quite often, is what window manager do you recommend for new users? And a lot of people have asked me, Matt, I've watched DT's Xmonad tutorials. I should try Xmonad. And my argument would be, no, you should not use Xmonad if you're a brand new window manager user. Just absolutely not. The only exception to that is if you already know Haskell. If you're a Haskell developer, but you've never used a window manager before, then Xmonad is probably perfect for you. But for everybody else, no. Xmonad is not for brand new users. Uh, and I don't even know that it's for me at this point. Yeah, I'm still using it. It's still good. And I'm happy here. Uh, but we'll see. I'm still using it right now. And that's really, it's as, it's as far as I've ever gotten with Xmonad. And I'm happy. And it, it's running really well. So we'll see if that stays true. So that's it for this video. If you have thoughts on it, you can leave those in the comment section below. Also, I'm not sure why I'm doing this when I'm talking about comments. But whatever. If you want to leave a like on this video, I'd really appreciate it. It really does help the channel. Matt. The ending is always the worst. <laughs> Anyways, you can follow me on you can uh, follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. I'm also on Peer. I also have my videos on a PeerTube instance. That's TIL vids. Those that link will be in the video description as well. You can support me on Patreon at patreoncom linuxcast. You can support me on Kofi at kofi.com slash linuxcast. And if you want to head on over to the merch shop where you can find hats and T-shirts and hoodies and desk mats and all sorts of good stuff. You can find that at shop.linuxcast.org. All that and all the proceeds go directly to helping the channel, which means more Linux content for you. Thanks everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the challenge just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, 
very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Without you, just seriously, thank you so very much. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.